Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Welcome everybody to a brand new class in the care of magical creatures. At the end of this year... Who? What? Don't my intro, Kettleburn. I'll steal whatever I want, son. Now by the end of this year, you may or may not, depending on how much effort Jam City put into it, you may have to complete your newts exam. What better way to prepare for that than a mock exam on Pottermore? So today we will be doing the Magical Creatures Quiz. Note that if you get over 70%, you will have the opportunity to become a future Magizoologist. Don't worry too much if you do not complete your exam. I didn't, and look where I'm standing. On only one foot though, sir. Yes. And one hand. Yes, that's true. And one eye. All correct. Do you have a point to make, Liz? I was thinking that if you passed your exam, do you think it would have given you a better chance to not lose your limbs? And I. Maybe as a young boy I was naive and thought, perhaps, maybe as a young magizoologist, if I knew that the smallest of dragons was not the best to try and tame on the first try. Yes. Peruvian viper tooth, yes, whilst they're the smallest. They are one of the most dangerous. They like to eat humans, so... I think what Liz is getting at, if you want to keep all your limbs and be a magizoologist, then you better bloody well pass this test. 70% and above? Pass. Below that, you're out. Let's get into it. Are you a magizoologist in the making? Do you know your froopers from your flobo arms? Think you can distinguish one end of a black extended scroot from the other? Whether you share Fagrid's affinity for all furry things, or prefer to steer clear of those who walk on all fours. Take our magical quiz to find out if you have what it takes to be the next Newt Scamander. What is the correct name for Newt Scamander's wizarding profession? A magibiologist. A magiveterinarian. Veterinarian. A magiveterinarian. Oh my god, I can't say it. A magiveterinarian. A magiveterinarian. A magiveterinarian. A magi veterinarian, yes, a beast hunter, or a magi zoologist. I'm tempted to go with beast hunter because, like, shiny hunter, then becoming beast hunter. It's kind of got a nice ring to it, but Newt is a magi zoologist. It's the hardest one in the question in this quiz because it's all about magi zoologists. Correct. We're off to a good start. In which year can Hogwarts student take care of magical creatures as a school subject? Second year. Sixth year, third year, or fourth, or fourth year. I would assume that because we did it in fourth year, it would be fourth year. Wrong! You are incorrect, boy. It's third year. <laughs> Damn it! No, was it third year that we got to do magical creatures? I think it's based on Hogwarts mystery. I don't know if that's fact because they may have only just created that. That's your third year. Do you know what we may have had it in third year? It feels very recent that we've only had it. Oh god, I'm gonna fail. Right, which magical creature has a penchant for shiny things? Is it a shifty bow truckle? Is it a nifty niffler? Is it a despicable demiguise? Or is it an Okami? Of course it's a niffler. Am I gonna get a question wrong about a niffler? Next question. Which of these magical properties does a phoenix not possess? The ability to rise from the ashes. The power to cause storms, a magical song which increases courage, or tears with healing powers. Please. I mean, Thunderbird can cause storms, a phoenix cannot. Next question. Which Hogwarts house was Newt Scamander in? Was he a Gryffindor, a Hufflepuff, a Slytherin, or a Ravenclaw? Ooh, do you know? Was he a Gryffindor? I don't think he was. Was he Slytherin? No. Was he a Ravenclaw? No. Was he a Hufflepuff? Correct! He was indeed boy in Hufflepuff. Well done. What was the name of Ginny Weasley's Pygmy Puff? Was it Colin? Was it Terry? Was it Arnold? Or was it Dean? Colin, Terry, Arnold or Dean? I feel like it was called Dean. Dean after Dean Thomas. Terry. 
Colin. I'm between Colin and Arnold. If you're struggling, just think what you'd call a pygmy puff. I mean, would you really call a pygmy puff Dean or Terry? Or Colin for that matter? I'm going to say, boy, you should go with Arnold. That's not cheating, sir, to tell me the answer. You are correct! You knew! The sign of a true magizoologist is when you don't know the answer, but you can work it out still. Well done, boy. Which of these dragons was not featured in the Triwizard Tournament? A common Welsh green, a Norwegian ridgeback, a Swedish short snout, or a Chinese fireball? I know there was a Chinese fireball. Just remember the egg. I feel like there was a Norwegian rig ridgeback as well. I don't think there was a Swedish short snout. You're wrong, boy! It was a Norwegian ridgeback! Why did you say it wasn't? Sorry, I really want you to pass. So we're, we're almost half the way and we've got two wrong. In which Harry Potter book does the Niffler first appear? Was it The Prisoner of Azkaban? Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone? Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire? Or Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix? You know what? I genuinely don't know. Right, so if I was going to say, I mean, where would I see a Niffler? Perhaps when he visited Gringotts? I can't remember. Uh, I don't think he'd have done it in the Goblet of Fire. Or the Order of the Phoenix. I think it's either Prisoner of Azkaban or Philosopher's Stone. I'm going to go Philosopher's Stone. You are wrong, boy, again! It was, in fact, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. You better get some questions right, son. Or you will be failing this class. What was the answer to the Sphinx's riddle in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire? Was it beetle? Was it a spider? Was it a flobber worm? Or was it a wasp? I don't think it was a flobber worm. I don't think it was a wasp. I think it's between a beetle and a spider for me. I feel like a Sphinx would come up with a, with a riddle that had a beetle in it. You are wrong, boy! It was a spider! Why didn't you go with that? I don't know. The pressure got to me. Sorry, sir. Next question. You actually can't afford to get one more answer right, or you will fail this class. Which creature... Yes! Which creature was originally used in Quidditch prior to being substituted for the Golden Snitch? Was it a Golden Snitchet? Was it a Golden Snitchet? Was it a Golden Widget? Or was it a Golden Spirit? And I can tell you it's a Golden Snitchet. Well done, boy. You're back on track. Which of the following do not appear in the title of a Gilderoy Lockhart book? Ghouls, hags, imps, or trolls? This one's hard. This, if I get this wrong, I've failed the class. Well, it's only a mock exam, though. That's, that's a hard question. I'm going to say trolls. I feel like ghouls, hags, and imps fall into a certain category where trolls might not fall into it. It was wrong, boy! It was, in fact, imps. You need to get back to the library. A blast-ended scroot is a hybrid of which two creatures? I know this one. A red cap and a hork lump. A fire crab and a manticore. An acromantula and a dragon. Or a murtlap and a mackled malclaw. Well, sir. I think it said it in your class. But I know that it's a fire crab and a manticore. Well done, boy. You made your salvage some respect. Which friend of Harry Potter marries Newt's grandson, Rolf Scamander? Was it Lavender Brown, Padma Patil, Luna Lovegood, or Katie Bell? I also know this answer. And I know that it's either Lavender Brown or... Why am I still talking in that <laughs> I oh, know it's either Luna Lovegood or Lavender Brown. Um, uh, it's not. Yeah, it's not Katie Bell, not Padma Patil. What does this have to do with animals? <laughs> Who put this question in the syllabus? This has nothing to do with animals because I feel the Lovegood name. I'm gonna. Oh, do you know what? It's Luna Lovegood. I know it is. I know it is. Yes, came back to me last minute. Yeah, because I thought 
She well, the thing is, she's a an animal lover with all her potentially made up or maybe real nargos and all that. Last two questions: the pelt of which beast can be used to make an invisibility cloak? A demi guys, a moon calf, a pixie, or a belly wig? Well. You have to think about which of these creatures has the ability to potentially go invisible. And the answer is if you watch Fantastic Beasts, is a demiguise. Demiguise. Next question. How does one breed a basilisk? This one's quite a strange one, but I do know the answer. Do you feed any reptile the tears of a phoenix? Do you hatch a chicken egg under a toad? Make a python drink its own blood? Or do you breed two species of snakes together. Well, Cowburn, I feel like I pulled out of the bag in the last couple of questions, but it is in fact hatch a chicken under a toad. You scored a score of 66%. You could not have been closer, son, at getting a pass. You may just make it when it comes to the future. Am I a Kelpie keeper? If you stay on this course, boy, and don't spend time in the library, you'll become a Kelpie Keeper. And you might just lose your limbs. Like me. And you might just lose your limbs like me in future as well. So, let's get to studying. Well, my throat is sore from doing Kettleburn accent. Like, it's like, I could not be Scottish all the time. How do you be Scottish? 66%. 4% off. Could not have been closer. Obviously, you knew I was going through it, that I'd missed it. What did you get? Let me know. Are there any of you that are already on track for passing your owl exam in Care of Magical Creatures at the final, at the end of this year? Not much gets past me when it comes to magical creatures. I reckon Hagrid would be up for starting a club with you. That's all right. If you go down, if you do go down this route, we recommend some extra thick gloves. So, there is still time. Still time to pass my exams. I have done this because... This is how I want the exams to be done in at the end of the year. I've done this because this is what I want. So, the way I've just done that mock exam is exactly how I want the owl exams to be in Harry Potter and Hogwarts Mystery. Please, Jam City, make this how you do it. Have some system. And if you even if like you you got one chance at it. So you can do some studying, genuinely, and it means that you've got to pay attention to some of your classes and what's said, and with that, create potentially an exam where if you get a pass, you earn a piece of a reward, like a piece of gear, like, like a new scarf. If you complete it, you get a new scarf or something to do with magical creatures in the Care of Magical Creatures class. If you complete the Defense Against the Dark Arts, you might get you might get you might get a cool artifact to wear on your neck. Something like that. That's how I want it to be run. Let me know your thoughts on it. Let me know what you guys did. Let me know what you guys got as well in the po Let me know as well what you got in the comments below. Did anybody achieve that 70%? It was early days. 66%. I think I'm safely on track for passing my owls when it comes to it at the end of the year. 66%. Not a bad score. Okay. Well, I'm going to go rest my throat. So I'm going to go rest my throat now because speaking in the Kettleburn accent for that long, that, that, that hurts. <laughs> Oof. Oof. <laughs> okay, that's all for this episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. That is all from me. See you guys soon.